Although the arretinoid is capable of a sliding motion, the principal movement of the arretinoid is that of rotation. Only a few decades ago, most major textbooks, atlases and laryngeal models incorrectly depicted a retinoid rotation as a turning on the vertical axis. The various positions of the vocal folds and how they arrive at these positions has frequently been misunderstood. For example, the vocal folds in unilateral paralysis are described by most textbooks as if they are positioned on a horizontal plane. There is no mention of vertical relationships. The consequences of a poor vertical alignment in unilateral vocal fold paralysis is by no means settled. A gap in the posterior glottis frequently occurs in vocal fold paralysis even when the membranous vocal folds appear to be adequately approximated. Arnold was the first to use polytef injection for the treatment of unilateral vocal fold paralysis. In an attempt to close the posterior glottal gap, Arnold recommended that on the paralyzed side, one half of the injection be placed lateral to the vocal process of the arretinoid. In another attempt to close the gap in the posterior glottis, two eminent laryngeal surgeons independently described a modification of the implant used in thyroplasty type 1 surgery. In order for the polytef placed lateral to the vocal process or the modified implants to be successful in closing the posterior glottal gap, the arretinoid would be required to rotate around its vertical axis. The constraints placed on the arretinoid by the cricoarretinoid joint and its ligamental and muscular attachments render such a rotation impossible. Using anatomical studies, Snell in 1947 disavowed that any vertical rotation was possible for the arretinoid and that the arretinoid rotated about the long axis of a facet found on the posterior, lateral and superior border of the cricoid. For the American Medical Association and combined ophthalmology and otolaryngology academy meetings of 1958 and 1959, von Leyden and Moore had constructed a 12 to 1 mechanized scale model of the cricoid and arretinoids. With this model, they dramatically demonstrated the actual rotation of the articulated arretinoid cartilages. This exhibit was followed by a superb article on the cricoretinoid joint, published in a spring issue of the Archives of Otolaryngology in 1961. Using trigonometric functions derived from photographing the rotating of arretinoids simultaneously in the sagittal, horizontal, and coronal planes, Frabel clearly confirmed Snell's contentions about arretinoid rotation. Contemporarily, Sonnison, using the German literature, published an excellent article and produced a very elegant film, clearly demonstrating exactly how the arretinoid moves. Following these significant contributions, atlases and texts were changed to correct the erroneous descriptions of arretinoid movement that had been contained in earlier publications. With these corrections, publications, exhibits, and the Sonnison film, one would expect that a clear and accurate image of retinoid movement would exist in the minds of all students of the larynx. However, too few people had the opportunity to view the Sonnison film. Two-dimensional representations in atlases and texts fail to provide a clear understanding of a three-dimensional rotary movement and a new generation has arisen since the publication of the classic film, exhibits, and articles. The primary reason for a misinterpretation of the facts regarding a retinoid movement lies in the perspective gained in viewing the interior of the larynx from above. When a mirror, endoscope, or telescope is used, depth perception and binocular vision is impaired or abolished. In addition, the velocity of the arretinoid rotation is so rapid that without the assistance of a rapid speed camera, the human eye finds it difficult to discern vertical, anterior, and posterior movements. The unaided eye also finds it difficult to note that anterior, posterior, and vertical movements are describing a curvilinear rather than a strict linear path. Horizontal appearing movements dominate and this dominance is reinforced by the fact 
that the medial and lateral movements occur as a magnitude twice as great as any vertical or anterior-posterior movement. The viewer finds it hard to realize that the vocal folds, on being separated or opposed, are following a retinoids that on moving horizontally are also being rotated. The impression gained is that the opening and closing of the glottis occurs on a plane oriented purely to the horizontal. This creates the false impression that the retinoids are rotating on their vertical axes. To better understand the rotation of the retinoids, it is parenthetically helpful to review the principles of rotation. For simplicity, the topic of rotation is generally described as occurring about the axes X, Y, and Z. These three independent axes intersect at a common pivotal point known as the center of gravity. The center of gravity for the retinoid is influenced by its mass, shape, and the forces generated by ligamental and muscular attachments. The vast majority of people are most familiar with rotation on a vertical axis, known as the y-axis. Rotation on this axis is known as yaw, and the plane described by the rotating body on this axis is a horizontal or cross-sectional plane. A third dimension of rotation is introduced when the horizontal or z-axis is described. Rotation on this axis is known as roll. A body rotating on the z-axis describes the plane known as the coronal plane. It is unclear whether any roll rotation for the retinoid occurs in vivo. Von Leyden suggested that a minimal roll was possible when the pivotal point was changed to the posterior cricoid ligament. The final axis to be described is that which occurs on the transverse horizontal axis known as the x-axis. Motion on this axis is known as pitch and the plane described by pitch rotation is that of the sagittal plane. It appears that pitch is the only major axis of rotation allowed by the cricoretinoid joint. A point located on the anterior aspect of an object which is undergoing a forward directed rotation on the pitch axis or positive pitch will be seen to descend. When the direction of pitch rotation is backward or negative pitch the same point will be seen to rise or ascend. Pitch rotation thus involves a change in position both on a vertical and anterior-posterior dimension. Up until now, rather than using the retinoid to describe rotation, reference has always been made to the long axis of the elliptical and convex-shaped cricoid facet. With this facet inclined both in the sagittal and horizontal planes, a very interesting but complex sounding rotation is described. However, the rotation of the retinoid is not a complex one, but represents a simple rotation about its pitch axis. The two retinoids articulated to the cricoid facets are seen to be perched on the posterior lateral aspect of the cricoid. The vocal process of each retinoid is seen not only to descend with forward pitch rotation, but also to move medially. This medial movement approximates the two vocal processes and, as a result, the vocal folds close the glottis. On backward directed pitch rotation, the vocal process is seen not only to ascend or rise, but to move laterally. This separating of the two vocal processes allows the vocal folds to widely open the glottis. It is the inclination or sloping of the cricoid facet that allows the retinoids, while being rotated on their pitch axes, to move medially or laterally. This film clip was obtained using high-speed photography and is presented through the courtesy of Dr. Paul Moore. The vocal fold on the right of the screen is paralyzed. On attempted phonation, the retinoid's anterior directed rotation is clearly seen on the left of the screen. In addition, the retinoid is directed medially, and with an understanding of pitch rotation, the vocal process of this retinoid would be descending. Here, the cricoid is viewed from above. The facet is described as it runs from posterior to anterior. Using this means of description, 
the facet is found to be inclined or sloped laterally from the midline or mid-sagittal plane. The arretinoids, on being joined to the cricoid facets, share this anterolateral inclination. Thus, the arretinoid cartilages are naturally positioned so that they are angled towards one another. Each arretinoid, on moving forward, has its vocal process not only descending, but also moving medially. The result is closure of the glottis. Conversely, when the arretinoid body moves backward, the vocal process not only rises, but is moved laterally, opening the glottis. On viewing the cricoid from the side, and again describing the cricoid from posterior to anterior, the facet is also found to be sloped or inclined from the horizontal. The arretinoids, on articulating with the facets, will share this antero-inferior inclination and, as a result, each arretinoid is fixed into an outward rotation on its Z or roll axis. This outward roll of the arretinoid allows for a broader contact of each vocal process on closure of the glottis and maximizes the glottal width on opening of the glottis. In this individual, the inclination from the horizontal is great enough so that both the medial, inferior and superior medial edges of the abducted right vocal fold can be seen simultaneously. When rotating on a pitch axis, the movement of the arretinoid resembles that of a rocking horse. Thus the term rocking has often been used to describe arretinoid rotation. Whether one uses the descriptive term rocking or the more accurate scientific term pitch rotation, it is important to realize first that the cricoarretinoid joint allows for significant rotation only on one axis, the x-axis. Second, that on rotating, the arretinoid describes a movement resulting in a change in the vertical as well as the anterior-posterior position of the vocal process of the arretinoid and attached vocal fold. And third, the inclination or sloping of the cricoarretinoid joints allows pitch rotation of the arretinoids to both close and widely open the glottis. The widely open glottis satisfies the needs of the respiratory system. The closed glottis not only provides protection for the lower airway, but also places the vocal folds in an optimal position for phonation. This film utilizes what has been, up to now, accepted standard nomenclature for a retinoid motion. The advantage of the term pitch rotation is that it describes the vertical movements that the vocal processes and the attached true vocal folds undergo. There is another term which, when applied to the retinoid, describes not only a change in verticality, but also indicates that anterior and posterior movements occur as well. This term was properly applied to a retinoid motion over a century ago, when in 1861, Zermak stated, the retinoid processes revolve over the cricoid. Various dictionaries, encyclopedias, and texts use the terms to rotate or to revolve interchangeably. However, there is a critical distinction between these two terms. A rotating body turns on an axis originating within the object about which it revolves. This arretinoid, on following the curvature of the cricoid facet, is actually turning on an axis originating within the cricoid. This distinction becomes clear with the statement, the planets revolve about the sun as they rotate on their own internal axes. Which term one chooses to describe a retinoid motion 
is more a matter of semantics and is probably not that important. What is important is the realization that on being moved, the arytenoids are simultaneously undergoing movements in three directions, vertical, anterior and posterior, and medial and lateral. The medial and lateral movements are ultimately due to the cricoarytenoid's facet's lateral inclination from the sagittal plane. The arytenoids, on being attached to this facet, are so oriented that the long or roll axis of the arytenoids are angled towards one another, with each vocal process forming an acute angle with the anterior commissure. This favorable angulation facilitates medial directed movement when the arytenoid body slides forward as its vocal process descends, and lateral directed movement when the arytenoid body slides backward as the vocal process arises.